Ladies and gentlemen, Tactical Vance here, and welcome to a new video. Now today, we're going to be talking about components, how they will work in the future, and also how they work currently in-game. And at the end, we'll also go through how you can upgrade your ships right now to improve them in the current build of Star Citizen. And just before we start, a company called Game Glass, if you're not familiar with them, they are a company that make a app for tablet and mobile phone that emulates the MFDs that are inside of Star Citizen, so all your displays. So you can basically have it all on one tablet and you can control everything from shields to power to takeoff. You can pretty much control everything from the tablet. This works great for people using HOTAS or dual sticks or even mouse and keyboard. It gives you a way of having lots of buttons on one screen. To enter to win one of these game glass keys, simply leave a comment below and like or dislike the video. I will pick the winner after two days from the comments and then I'll do the same probably with my next video as well. I would like to point out this is not a paid promotion. I've been given these keys just to give away. Thank you very much, Gang Glass. So let's get started by talking about the component system that Star Citizen are creating for the game. And let's start with grades. So, so far we've got from grade A to D, A being the higher quality and D being the lower grade. With the A and B grade, there's a chance also that you will get a sub slot and we will cover sub slots off in a second. A grade is the performance. They're using grades to identify the performance of individual components. Let's go through the options and what we've got so far so let's start off with grade a a grade is the best possible component you will be able to use this will likely come with a additional slot as well a sub slot which we'll cover off at the end of the section i'll explain what the sub slots are b grade is good performance this may also have a, a sub slot as well. You then have C grade. This is the standard item. And when I mean standard, this is the default item you will get on the majority of the ships. This is classed as average performance. And the final one on the list is D grade. I believe so far the NPCs and the AI use these grades. These are cheap. So why would you actually use one of these grades? Because they are going to be very, very cheap. This could be something that you could put inside a cupboard inside your ship and use in an emergency to get you out of a tricky situation if one of your components becomes damaged and you want to get back to your home base. So that covers off the grades of the components. Moving on, we have a classification. Now classification is the type of ship that is going to be installed on. Example would be military ship. A military ship would have an option of selecting military components. This doesn't apply at the moment in the PU. In the current build, you can install components from different classifications of ships and basically put them on anything. So what this means is you could get your exploration ship and put military components on it. You could get your small racer and put military components on it and vice versa. The cool thing about this, which I will demonstrate nearing the end of the video, is you can go into game right now and upgrade your components to military grade components and see how it fares out. So let's take a look at the classifications. The first classification we have is military. It's the best overall item, but it does come with a minus, and that minus is expense and admissions. Next up, we have the civilian classification. This is the most common and widely used. It's a good middle ground between cost as well. The third one we have is stealth. Stealth vastly reduces the signature consumption at the expense of functionality. So could be, for example, that it might be lacking in speed slightly, but have a very, very low IR. And number four on the list is industry. The industry classification is a reliable output and low wear rate, but has high emissions. Makes total sense. So if you're doing some long distance space trucking there and back over and over again, then industry will definitely be the correct classification overall. And number five on the list is competition. Now, competition has a higher performance than military, but at the expense of durability and stealth. And basically, performance prevails. So, so basically what this means is it's going full bore, full power, not really caring about durability and putting total performance in front of everything else. So overall, I really like the way that this is being laid out. There's definitely a selection for everyone. Clear runner there for, I would say, military. Definitely a clear runner there for industry, stealth, and also the competitive aspect as well. And then obviously, if you just want to do day-to-day -day stuff, there's your civilian one. At the start of the video, 
video, I highlighted that some of the components have sub-items. This includes A and B grade. Some components items boost the base efficiency. They are classed as consumable parts and they will wear much faster than their host items themselves. So basically the sub-item will take some of the wear away from the main item. You can use a component without a sub-item, but you will find that there will be a small boost in performance as well when the sub-item is installed. And it's also recommended that players carry spare sub-components for long hauls as well, so they can swap them out over the time to extend the duration of the trip as well. There are three categories for the sub-items. We have efficiency, protection and detection. Efficiency improves the overall effectiveness of the main item by reducing down the power or improving the cell's performance. The next sub-item is protection. Protection reduces the damage being dealt to the main item by absorbing different effect damage types, thus reducing the wear rate and misfire chance of the main component. So basically, protection is... The sub-item is basically taking some of the damage that the component is physically taking. And the last one we have is detection. And detection inhibits omissions from the main item or provides resistance to scanning. This would be very, very handy if you want to do some stealth emissions and you don't want to be detected. You could go for a full stealth build. I like the direction they're going in. I really like the fact that you can change the character of your ship on how you play it. And I also like the fact that you can negate some of the damage away from some of the main components. This will be much more significant on the larger ships for subcapital and capital, where I should imagine the components are going to be very, very expensive. It's going to be a lot cheaper to change out a subcomponent than it is a main component. Now what we've just spoke about is what Star Citizen are working towards and going to deliver for the component system for the ships. Let's jump into game and look what you can do right now to upgrade your ship to make it before much better. So once you've launched into Star Citizen, you'd normally spawn at Port Olisar. You could be at another location, but you can simply do exactly the same thing I'm doing just by finding a dumpers depot. When you spawn in, you spawn in in front of this center console. One side's got doors, the other side's got an archway. You're looking for the archway. On one side, you've got the Cassaba Clothing Store, and the other side, you've got Dumper's Depot. Now, in the description, I will leave a link of all items that can be purchased within Star Citizen and the location. So, if you want to find a particular item of clothing or module, then that is definitely the website to look at. So, we are going to update one of our ships. Let's have a look. So, just simply press F1. And you will see down the bottom here, if you've upgraded your clothes before, this is where you do your clothes, and this is where you do your physical ship. Once this screen comes up, you will see in the top corner here, comes up, you simply select the ship you want to upgrade. Let's go for the Constellation Aquila this time. Once it's loaded, you'll be able to see the ship here. You have miscellaneous, which is normally missiles, propulsion, which is self-explanatory, Systems, which is cooler power plants and shield generators. And then the last one's obviously self-explanatory. It's physical weapons. We're going to take a look at systems and we're going to upgrade the coolers on this constellation. Currently, it says it's got two coolers. If we hover on the cooler, we can see it's a size 2 grade 1 civilian version. So let's see if we can upgrade this to maybe a grade 2 military. Now you'll see these terminals when you come into Dumper's Depot. Simply go up to one of the terminals. You have the same selection that we've seen in the Moby Gas. Miscellaneous, propulsion, systems and weapons. In this case we want to go systems, coolers. We can see a size 2 here, so look at this one. That's the one we're looking for. It's a size 2, C grade. So this is going from now civilian to military. Says it's nearly 6,000 each, so we need to buy two of these. There we go, we've purchased them now. Bye. So now what we're going to do is we're going to load these components on the ship. Exactly the same as we did before. Into the Moby Glass. Click on the ship icon. Select the ship. Go to Systems. Coolers. And then find the ones that you've actually purchased, which are down here. 
Once you've selected it, you can just click save now. But we need to do two, don't we? So we're going to this one as well. We'll click on save. There we go. I've just upgraded the components to a military class component. So that's the simple way you can upgrade. There will be a bit of traveling involved. You would have to look at the link I've put in the description. You can't buy all components from this individual Dumpers Depot. You might have to traverse the verse. The only downside is at the moment, when you do die, you do lose these components. What will happen later on in game? We will have the ability to insure additional items, weapons and cargo. So at the moment, just note yourself, if you do blow up, you will need to repurchase the items again. So either way, I hope this has helped you out and explained how the component system is going to work in the future and also how the component system currently works right now and what you can do right now in game to improve the performance of your ship or to even change the character of it. The last thing on the agenda today is if you're looking to join a Star Citizen organization, check out the link in the description below. If you want to support me, you've got all my social media pages. Also streaming on Twitch, check that link out as well. That's it for me. Thanks for listening and don't forget to subscribe. Bye now.